so you want to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duels. This video is going to serve as a guide for anyone who's just starting out with Speed Duels or current players who would like to broaden their experience with the game. It's not going to teach you the actual rules to Speed Duels, but rather what you can do after you've learned the rules. If you would like to learn the exact rules, watching the video linked in the description below, made by Konami and voiced by Pegasus, will help with that. If you've played the mobile game Duel Links, the rules follow Duel Links. So let's start with an introduction. My name is Aaron Forrest. I go by Alum Line Online, and I've been playing Speed Duels from the beginning. I've dabbled heavily in both the competitive and casual aspects of the game. I've topped and won events, and I've amassed what I believe is the most complete Speed Duel collection in the world. This channel is the Speed Duel League, where we strive to bring you the best and most competitive content that Speed Duels has to offer. Stay tuned towards the end of the video for more information on that. This video is going to be broken down into three parts. I'll leave timestamps to these parts so that you can skip around to the ones you're most interested in. This video will cover 1. A quick history of speed duels, as the best way to figure out where you're going is to see where you're coming from. 2. The current meta of speed duels, which is basically a rundown of what to expect at top tournaments you plan to play in. I'm not going to make any promises about your locals, though. And finally, the last segment is what I would do if I was to start Speed Duels right now from scratch while still maintaining all of the knowledge that I've built up from playing it over these couple years. So let's get started with this timeline. The first Speed Duel products launched at the end of January 2019. They were the Starter Decks, Destiny Masters, and Duelists of Tomorrow. It introduced character classics like Dark Magician, Blue Eyes White Dragon, Red Eyes Black Dragon, Relinquished, Toons, Gravekeepers, Harpy Ladies, and Amazons. Iconic cards from the characters on the front of the boxes, basically. The undisputed two best decks at the time were Blue Eyes, which focused on using its powerful Dragon Caller skill with Lord of D to spam the field with powerful dragon monsters, and Amazons, which used its support cards and generic back row to try and deal with the powerful dragons. There was also a skill called Tribal Synergy that allowed you to draw extra cards if you controlled both Amazon and Harpy monsters. Fast forward two months to March, and Speed Duels got its first booster box, Arena of Lost Souls, introducing a bunch of zombie type monsters into the game, like the Skull Servants. It also added strong cards like Sphere Kribo, Gravekeeper's Ambusher, and Sinju of the Thousand Hands. In terms of deck strength, those last two additions allowed Relinquish to spot into the meta, but not much else changed just yet. One month later, in April, the first tournament pack is released for Speed Duels. It ended up just being the previous iconic cards from the starter decks reprinted as super rares and ultra rares, but the packs were a little hard to get a hold of given that not many locals participated in speed duels, so they can hold a good value to collectors. One month after that, in May, the second booster box, Attack from the Deep, is released, focusing mainly on water cards. We got Leviathan Dragon Daedalus, but we also got Blade Knight, Sonic Bird, Mask of the Accursed, Dust Tornado, and the skill It's My Lucky Day which allowed you, one time, to pay 1,000 life points to guarantee the result of a coin flip or die roll. The best decks of this format would be beater decks, like Lucky Day Gravekeepers, who used Dice Foon from the previous Joey Starter deck, and Tribal Synergy, both making use of generic back row. Relinquish now had all its consistency pieces, and Blue Eyes was all but completely pushed out of the meta at this point. Fast forward another two months to the first day of August, and we have a booster box and starter deck released together. The Scars of Battle booster box and the Ultimate Predator's starter deck featuring Rex and Weevil. These sets introduced a lot of new cards to the game all at once, including warriors like Gearfreed the Swordmaster and Command Knight, machines like Barrel Dragon, Pendulum Machine, and Blasphere, some decent trap cards like Metamorph and Spellbunny Circle, and skills like Spellproof Armor, making your machines immune to spell effects and reducing the number of tributes they require to summon by one, and Servants of the Fallen King, serving as a once-per-turn foolish burial for Skull Servants. Rex's starter deck would introduce Serpent Knight Dragon, which went on to be meta-defining with its powerful Nightmare Sonic Blast skill. He would also introduce other Dino cards, alongside Order to Charge and the Dino Kingdom skill. Weevil's starter deck would obviously introduce Insect cards, including the Hidden Parasite and Eradicating Aerosol combo, turning all face-up monsters on the field into insects using the skill, and then destroying them with the spell card. This format started off as a continuation of the last format, being defined by powerful beatdown decks. This time, Warriors, 
and Gravekeepers, with a little bit of Dinos. Not too long after, optimal Serpent Knight Dragon decks started popping up, becoming very difficult to consistently deal with due to a lack of spot removal cards in the game. By the end of this format, another way to play the game emerged, focusing on stall tactics. Then, in October, Tournament Pack 2 released, picking up where Tournament Pack 1 left off and reprinting classic cards, as well as some others, as super rares and ultra rares, including one of the first printings of Fortress Whale since its debut in Tournament Pack 7 of Advanced Format Yu-Gi-Oh! Though, this Tournament Pack still wouldn't be as coveted as Tournament Pack 1. Finally, in early December, the last speed duel set of 2019, Trials of the Kingdom, was released. You can probably already guess Magician of Black Chaos came with the set, but it also added a powerful combo with Parasite Paranoid and the Cocoon of Ultra Evolution skill, and powerful trap cards like Floodgate Trap Hole, Haunted Shrine, and Waking the Dragon. An honorable mention goes to Despair from the Dark. The post-Trials of the Kingdom format was quickly dominated by the stall strategies that defined the end of the Scars of Battle format, and eventually the Parasite, Cocoon skill, and Moth play entered tournaments as well. The Cocoon skill with Parasite Paranoid could allow you to tribute your opponent's monster in order to special summon Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth from your deck, a 3500 attack monster that oftentimes spelt the end of the duel. These Moth decks had the remaining slots filled with either Warrior or Gravekeeper cards. And that's it for Speed Duels in 2019. That's also the end of past formats, so now we can get into the current format. The most recent set released in May of 2020. They were the Match of the Millennium and Twisted Nightmares starter decks, showcasing the matches between Yugi and Pegasus and Merrick and Bakura. These released a ton of new cards as well as some reprints. Starting off with the Match of the Millennium, the Yugi deck would introduce Gaia support in conjunction with the Knight of Legend skill, which would allow you to normal summon Gaia the Fierce Knight without tributing. It would also include Blackluster Soldier support alongside other more powerful cards. Pegasus's deck would of course introduce more Toon support into the game, including the skill Toon Mayhem, making it harder for your opponent to destroy your Toon World spell. He'd also introduce Thousand Eyes and Relinquish support. Didi Crow was an ultra rare variant with this set as well. Looking over at the other side, the Twisted Nightmares starter deck had a bit more of an impact on the meta. Merrick would have his classic cards Lava Golem, Helpo Wimmer, Drillago, and Nudoria introduced, while Bakura would add Dark Ruler Hades and Dark Necrofear alongside other various fiend monsters. Gap the Divine Soldier and Bizer Shock were also monsters that saw some uses. Some powerful trap cards came with this set, including Zoma the Spirit, Nightmare Wheel, Pride for Roar, and Metal Reflex Slime. Allure of Darkness and Offerings to the Doomed were also great utility spells. Merrick would also have the Twisted Personality skill that added counters each time a player took damage, and then you could remove those counters to remove cards from your opponent's hand or field while Bakura added the Inner Conflict skill, which allowed you to pay half your life points to take an opponent's monster for the turn, but it couldn't attack directly. Needless to say, the addition of all these cards changed the meta quite a bit. None of the previous decks were really that good anymore. For the best decks of this format, let me just be clear that Zoma and Nightmare Wheel were played in virtually every deck. The incredible amount of burn damage you can inflict on your opponent with these two cards and 4000 life point Yu-Gi-Oh catapulted them to stable status. From there, we saw a new form of Moth emerge as the top deck, a version that replaced its Warrior and Gravekeeper packages with smaller Dark Monsters with obnoxious effects, and a lure of Darkness to allow it to draw further into the deck for its necessary pieces. It would be Dark Moth. But don't you worry about the Warrior package. It found itself a new home with the new skills in the form of Inner Conflict Warrior and eventually Twisted Personality Warrior. Twisted Personality was also combined with old Gravekeeper cards with burn effects to make Gravekeeper burn. Relinquished and even Gaia decks also saw some initial play, but were ultimately not as successful as these other decks. Now let's look at the last change to the current format. Since the release of the starter decks in May, there was only one additional change to the Speed Duel card pool. A European promotional event called the Trials of the Pharaoh carried with it Jinzo as a promotional card you could win in the event. This made Jinzo legal to play in all European Speed Duel tournaments while also legal to use online for the rest of the world. Though due to the coronavirus, most events were online anyways. The arrival of Jinzo all but eliminated Gravekeeper Burn decks, as well as knocked off Moth decks as the premier tier 1 deck of the format. 
Inner Conflict Warrior and Twisted Personality Warrior were now considered the best decks of this format. People also used Twisted Personality with Burn decks, while Dark Moth, Warrior Moth, Spellproof Armor, and Relinquish decks have all seen a decent amount of play. As the final point of this video, let's talk about the best things that you could do to get into speed duels and get the full experience the format has to offer. Not to sound like a sellout here, but I do think the best thing you can currently do is join the Speed Duel League Discord. I'm going to put an invite link here in the video just in case, but it's also going to be in the description below. We are the largest Speed Duel Discord out there and try to serve as a central hub for Speed Duels, bringing you news, information, and the best content we can, while also trying to connect you to everyone else's content as well. The Discord has got a monthly leaderboard ranking the top 10 Speed Duel players in the world using a point system based on tournament tops, a calendar that lists upcoming Speed Duel tournaments for the month, we've got the largest ongoing Speed Duel tournament, the Speed Duel League Win a Box, a free to enter tournament where you can win a free booster box or cash prize. We're also setting up a $500 free entry tournament, the Speed Duel series, so be on the lookout for that. There's a channel that lists the top cut deck lists of concluded tournaments, channels that break down the most played decks of the format, as well as decks with the most tops in tournaments, allowing you to be up to date with the meta at all times, deck discussion channels, a rumor channel that correctly reported Book of Moon as the next Trials of the Pharaoh promo one week before its official reveal, roles that allow you to be pinged when a new Speed Duel video is uploaded to YouTube from many of the top Speed Duel content creators as well as when their streams go live, spoiler and announcement channels that will keep you up to date on all Speed Duel news, a judge channel to help you with pesky Speed Duel rulings like skill interactions which can sometimes go against normal Yu-Gi-Oh rules, buying and selling channels as well as a market watch channel, new player channels with additional links to help you get started if you're starting from scratch, and finally, an index section that catalogs a listing of nearly every other Speed Duel Discord, Facebook group, and YouTube channel out there. So you really are doing yourself a disservice if you're into Speed Duels and not in the Speed Duel League Discord. The next thing I would do right now is look into buying the Speed Duel Battle City box. You may have been wondering if there were any product or cards that I would recommend you to buy for the format, and that's what this is. The Battle City box is perhaps the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh product ever conceived. It has in it 200 common cards, 20 skill cards, and 8 secret rares, three of which are going to be the Egyptian God cards. It's bringing with it cards like Dark Paladin, XYZ Dragon Cannon, Valkyria on the Magna Warrior, Dimensional Alchemist, all in all, this product represents the card economy of around four regular Speed Duel booster boxes and has an MSRP of $30, which is less than the MSRP of one Speed Duel booster box. So it's four booster boxes worth of cards for a price that is lower than one booster box, making it perhaps the greatest value placed within a Konami Yu-Gi-Oh product ever. This product will be released in Europe in late November 2020 and in North America in early December 2020, barring any delays. So if you're watching this video before those dates, you know what you're waiting for. And if you're watching this video after those dates, then all you have to do is figure out how the Battle City box changed the meta from the previous meta mentioned earlier in this video. And joining the Speed Duel League Discord would be the easiest way to do that. And that is all I've got for getting into Speed Duels. It's a relatively young format. You've watched this video. Hopefully you're joining the Speed Duel Discord and at least paying attention to the Battle City box. And all of that will put you on par with the knowledge and product pretty much everyone else has in the community. Oh, and if you're wondering what Konami currently does for Speed Duels, other than giving us new product every couple months or so, there are Speed Duel side events at every YCS and regionals, including the Attack of the Giant Cart event. That's it for this video guys, if you found it informative or it helped you at all be sure to leave a like or possibly send it around to some of your friends you would like to try and get into the speed duel format. It's a really fun format that I think has a lot of potential. Anyways guys, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.